I mean, would you like more to escort you to the village? I, no, no. I, 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 uh, if, if I leave right now, so I think I will. Wait, wait. You haven't had your brandy yet. Oh, brandy. Well, oh, perhaps just one. I, I, I really could use it, you know. After all, nasty business, this whole wave of disappearances. <laughs> yes, nasty, utterly incomprehensible. There seems to be no pattern to it. At least nothing the police can sink their teeth into. <laughs> if you'll pardon the expression. What is this, the third now? No, the fourth in a week. Four? It must be miscounted. Let's see, there was... Randolph Rainford was the first last Tuesday. The richest man in the village. Disappearing from his own garden. His neighbors say it was as if a giant gopher had grabbed him from behind, cold watch and all, and dragged him right down to the ground. <laughs> and then, Bill Box, tin cup and all, was seen slip sliding towards the storm drain on the corner where he used to beg for arms from passers by. That was Wednesday. Astonishing. And Thursday, Yesterday, Peter Payton, the most poverty-stricken man in the village, went out into the woods to gather firewood and never returned. There was not a trace of him, not even his ragged coat. And today, as you know, that is Trossel disappearing, vanishing from his impregnable cell in the village dungeon. I just don't understand it. All the victims were so different. If only there were some link, some chain, some things that they all had in common. Can you detect what it might be, Herr Baron? Do you know what this link might be? Let me see. Randolph Renfrew, a rich man. Peter Payton, a poor man. Bill Botts, a beggar man. And that is Drossel, a thief. No, can't say that I do. <laughs> well, sorry to have bothered you, uh, Air Baron, and uh, Lord. Yeah. He's the prefect of police. Sure, he does not want to see the butterflies. Um, so, so much of time, thank you. Uh, right now, it's it, it's getting late. Uh, much too late. <laughs> They saw you lurking around the village dungeon. Of course, we could always say it was someone who looked just like you. <laughs> Did you finish, sir? Uh, not quite. Four down, four to go. Oh, you mean the brandy. Oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Where's the other glass? I believe Heinrich took it with him. Seemed to be in a bit of a hurry. <laughs> Let them in. Very well, sir. 
you didn't wonder what had happened to you. Well, you know I said I'd take care of that cab. Excuse me? You got a cab driver to come here at night? Well, no, that's just it. The sun went down as Daisy was knocking on the front door, and I had to chase his horse and carriage halfway down the mountain before I could get him his fare. If he hadn't stopped at those big iron gates to your driveway, I'd still be running. I hope you gave the man a nice tip. I sure did. I told him he'd get rich a lot quicker if he waited around to be paid. Strange people in that village, I must say. <laughs> Daisy, you never told me this place was so deliciously creepy. I beg your pardon. <laughs> what? what did you do? Oh, Daddy, I completely forgot to tell you about Bazzy Malou. She and I were roommates in college, and I thought it would be an absolute lark if she came here to visit me after graduation. <laughs> and she thought so, too. And, well, here she is. Or did I? Did I you what? what? Forget to tell Daddy about Babsy? Daisy, I can hardly know whether you forgot, but I do know that you didn't. Didn't forget? Didn't tell him. Tell him what? About Babsy. Oh, well, now you know anyhow. And Daddy, this is Babsy. Um, Charmed, but short. <laughs> Babsy may stay, Daddy, may it she? It won't be too much trouble? Of course not, my dear. Then where will she stay? Daisy, your father was answering Babsy's question, not yours. Last first. <laughs> Daisy, my dear, in answer to your question, of course. Oh, good. What? What's my question? <laughs> if Babsy could stay. And can she? Of course I can. Your father already said so. <laughs> Daisy, several times over the past four years, I've asked myself why I sent you away to college. Now I remember. <laughs> graduation exercises. The present was sorely missed. I would have been pleased to attend had I been invited. Did Daisy not inform you? I'm certain that I did. By night letter? Of course. That explains it. <laughs> it does? Oh, the villagers never come to the castle after dark. Oh, that explains the strange conduct of the cab driver. Why do the villagers never come to the castle after dark? Well, there are a variety of reasons. There's one now. <laughs> Good grief, what's that? Oh, there's four! Never come to the cat the dark. What are the others? Well, they say that strange things take place at night here at the castle. <laughs> but that, of course, is utter nonsense. Of course!
she seems lucky enough to try to do so. Yeah. <laughs> and why should she not sleep? The bedroom for spacious, the bedding is soft and warm. What could possibly disturb her? <laughs> yeah. You are imagining things, Gretchen. I didn't hear it either. That's what I thought. <laughs> Curse that fool on his shrieking. He'll give the whole show away. Shall I see to him, Master? No, no, I'll see to Herr Randolph Renfrew. Uh, but can you be sure it was he who cried out? There are three others down there with him. Of course, I'm sure it is him. Who else but the richest man among them would cry out so piteously under such circumstances? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Of course, it sounds like 
chewing. Yeah, like a rat. No, I'm not a bone. Now, now, Lord, you'll give her a swollen head with such flattery. Richard, <laughs> you said dinner would be delayed, but how? I'm afraid when I put on a potato for Miss Blue, I allowed the others to burn. We'll have to start all over. More? Surely he's not going to take the potato at this hour of the night. Yeah. Oh, it's no trouble. Actually, more quite enjoys digging things up at night. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we all have some wine while we're waiting? <laughs> I'll have a small one. <laughs> Make that a large one. Yeah. <laughs> I will see you later. <laughs> Shall we all be seated? <laughs> Lord, that is not polite. Lord is not polite. Sitting with your back to our other guest. Oh. <laughs> is that better, Herr Baron? Oh, much, much better indeed. <laughs> Herr Baron, I couldn't help noticing the various speakers around here, and the most wonderful device upon the table. You recognize that device? You understand its use? Yes. Is this not what they call a stereo receiver? A device used for adjusting the individual reception of the speakers? Yes, of course it is. That's just what it is. What else could it be? More, more. Now, are you not forgetting the potatoes? Ah, yes, of course. The potatoes. <laughs> I shall get them at once, Master. <laughs> More of there has a heart of gold. Stainless steel would last longer. Yes, but steel is much more difficult to work with. Herr Baron, I noticed you have the speakers and the receiver, but I did not see a turntable anywhere. Yes, wherever do you hide the thing, sir? Where do I hide? The thing? The, the turntable! The turntable! Oh, that. I don't have one. What? The speakers? And the receiver? And no turntable? How do you play your phonograph records? I have no phonograph records. Why ever not? Well, for one thing, I hate music. <laughs> That's right. I've forgotten. And for another thing, the phonograph has not yet been invented. <laughs> I never thought of that. Silly me. But then, what is all this other equipment used for? Would you really like to know? <laughs> now that you mention it, I guess I'd rather not. <laughs> Ah, here's Gretchen with the wine. Ladies. Ah, such a nice, dark shade of red. It's almost the color of... Yes, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I will need more here for when he returns from the day. Thank you, Gretchen. If we need anything else, we will call. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we all drink a toast to my darling daughter's homecoming and to a nice, short visit with her charming friends? Very. I do not want to toast under false pretenses. You see, I know they're friends of Daisy. Oh? Well, well, uh, we've known each other for four years now, and I have a rather good job. I sell ice cream. It's a low up and coming thing. The horse is as good as dead. Well, they have absolutely marvelous prospects. You think so, eh? Well, uh, uh, not so much, I guess. Uh, horses have been around a long time. Frank, really, this is taking forever. Daddy, what Frank is trying to tell you is that he and I have become busy. Busy? <laughs> Occupied? Occupied? Engaged. <laughs> Engaged? To be married? If you don't mind, of course. Mind? Mind if you get married? <laughs> Why should I mind? Then you don't mind if Daisy and I get married? Excuse me, but I have a question, Herr Baron. Something that has been perplexing me since I first arrived here at the castle. Oh yes, straight up the stairs, third door to your left. Oh no, no, not that. Daisy has already been kind enough to show me the whereabouts of that particular room. What particular room? Power room, of course. It was ever so exciting. Exciting? Yeah. But quite so many different kinds. Kinds of what? Powder, of course. 
about your intentions to marry my Daisy? Yes, I believe I can make her happy. But I'm already happy. Okay, happier. Oh, good. <laughs> you must understand that Daisy has been reared in luxury. What can you provide? Here she has vast rooms, lovely clothes, jewelry, plenty to eat and drink, servants, and of course the title of Baroness von Blitzen. How can you hope to match all of that in some wretched little room above a bicycle shop? Oh, I'll admit, it won't be a stylish marriage. He can't afford a carriage, but all looks sweet upon the seat. <laughs> I forget the next part. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want the loveliest potato in the garden? It's shaped like a human head. <laughs> I had to dig up the garden to find it. Do you know why I selected that particular shape? How many guesses do I get? Now more. Don't be a tease. Tell the lady why you selected a potato shaped like a head. <laughs> Because a potato shaped like a foot would look silly. <laughs> Family joke. Dinner is served. I hope you will be pleased. I had to warm it. Simply splendid. Gretchen, what are we having? Roast, suckling pig, smothered in onions. Smothered in onions? Isn't that a bit unusual? It is a bit unusual, but I didn't have the heart to use an axe. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delicious. Yes. <laughs> you will like it. Such soft little bones. <laughs> My favorite part is the narrow. Yes, of course. I always leave off the extra home. <laughs> <laughs> Another family joke. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Here. Yes. But uh, we 
fear they come to the castle of our Britain so late at night. You know the fear and dread this place holds for them. Yes, of course, Lord, but that is only because you are here. And if you are down in the village, lurking about in the night, what difference does it make to them where they spend the evening? After all, when you are about one place, it's as awful as another. Oh, Master, you say the nicest things. <laughs> nonsense, nonsense. I merely give credit where credit is due. Oh, no, 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 enough of that. <laughs> Off with you. Get those guests and bring them here. I shall expect them at nine o'clock sharp. So soon? They will not have time to get ready, Master. Just tell them it is a come-as-you-are party. But get them here. We must get them here so we can finally complete our experiment. Yes. All right, but, but remember what you promised. I help you with your experiment. You will help me do as I planned with Gretchen. Yes, yes, of course, Lord. As the old saying goes, one back scratches another. Don't you mean you shave my back, I'll shave yours? Well, whatever. But go, well, we must join our dinner guests. Yes, Master, at once! <laughs> Babsy Baloo, my roommate from college. 
First the fiance, now a friend. What else have you brought home with you? A very good report card. Oh, my goodness, I must say, that is quite a considerable accomplishment. But, darling daughter, um, this man you seem determined to wed, how well do you know him? Oh, I know Frankie inside and out. Why, just the other day, we were outside, and I recognized him almost immediately. <laughs> Oh, Lorenza, I forgot to tell you, we shall be having a small engagement party here tonight for Daisy. I've invited your sisters. Ah, and therefore, their fiancés as well, I presume. Ah, but you are a sly one, my chat, as if I did not know what you planned. Sly? Why? What have you planned? Can I be the whole? You may not. Ah, you understand, Mr. Sturdy, that just the sense of mystery is an attractive thing in a woman. So it is in a family. We of the nobility often choose to play our mysterious little games of silence. And of course, besides that, it is also none of your stinking business. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy does have a way with words. Yes, her beauty is a match for her wisdom. Yes, of course. What more could I have asked for in a life? You could have asked for $15. Well, <laughs> <laughs> shall we all go into dinner then? feel truly civilized, do you not agree, Mr. Sterling? Oh, but of course. Uh, very well. That's so. Last night, you're the rotten egg! <laughs> Yes, Baroness, I 
upstairs to the bathroom anyway, or I'll put them on one of the upstairs beds. Be careful, it is dark up there. Are you sure of the way? Uh, it, it is uh, third door, is it not? On the right, I believe. <laughs> Where, Tell are the oh. Where are the others? Could they not come? Oh, but they have. You see, the driving room go past the gates, the bottom of the road. We simply walk the different rates. Increases, if you'll all excuse me. Oh, I really feel silly in this action on this day, such an occasion. Not as silly as we feel in these paper hats. <laughs> oh, it would have been quicker. Ah, oh, Gretchen, just in time. I would have been quicker, but I had finished clearing the table when more left from the mountain down How may I serve you, Your Highness? Would you bring in the refreshments, please? Find out what our guests would like. Name your poison. Family <laughs> <laughs> Oh, really? Anything would be all right. Yes, please don't fuss. Just bring whatever's handy, except more. <laughs> <laughs> introductions earlier. <laughs> this is Fritz Stöcken and his fiance, Frieda. Oh, who is my sister? We were just going into night court to defend an innocent man. I'm a stenographer. And you are? I'm Frank Sterling, the patrol of Daisy. And I'm Babsy Balloon, the college roommate of Daisy. And I'm Daisy! They know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, my dear, I was going upstairs to the bathroom anyhow. I'll, I'll leave them on one of the upstairs beds. It is a uh, third door on the left, yes? No! Wait, that's the powder room! And Mord is in there! <laughs> Mord? But he will not be alone. Hans is already up there. Yes, I wonder what's keeping him. Well, the corridor is quite dark, and he may still be trying doors. <laughs> yes, of course, that, that must be it. Well, I'll be back in a moment. Where is Gretchen with our refreshments? Uh, she's getting them right now, darling. Doctor, then the lawyer. This must be the merchant. <laughs> the strangest thing. Please, let's not talk about more. No, no. What I meant was <laughs> there's something odd about what the Baron just said. It has to do with what was mentioned earlier about those four men, those men who are missing from the village. What is it, Frank? What are you getting at? That's just it. I can't quite remember. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Doctor, lawyer, merchant. Oh well, it must be no importance. Tell me. How soon will you and Hans be wed? About ten minutes before Fritz and I. <laughs> well, I know that. You do? How? She needs a new effort to do the idea. Can I 
his brother's Prevelle content? Alas, all the Stumpins feel the same way about it. After all, they are European themselves. That's just it, Baroness. Why does your father do the European thing? Yes, after all, the Zinsons are from Mitchburg. Yes, but my father was from Munger. From Bert, did you say? What Mamritza means is that socially, he wasn't precisely an asset, an old American expression. Ah, oh, such a pity it is. Daisy, my darling, how are you? Engaged? Isn't that me? Oh, that it were always so. I cannot get this verse, Duncan, to name the day. It's Friday, <laughs> Otto. <laughs> the day of our honeymoon. Oh. Here, Oma, let me rid you of this. Uh, and, and meantime, if you don't mind... Top of the stairs, third door on the right. Uh, why, yes, of course, thank you, all of you. Uh, I'll only be a moment. That's what they all say. Well, don't they? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Frank Sterling, Daisy's intended, and this is Badge and Lou, the roommate from college. Do you and Otto work together? Yes. He owns the village grocery store, and I help people get loaded. How's that again? They're groceries. I take them out of their services for them. It's so nice to make things work out. Hand to hand, I'm working the hospital. Fritz and Frida working for Otto and Olga working the grocery store. Wait, let me guess. Heinrich is the chief of police, so Heidi must be a meter maid or something. I would prefer not to talk about Heidi. <laughs> In public, that is. Among ourselves, we talk of nothing else. <laughs> Why? What has she done? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> and that, of course, is precisely the problem. <laughs> Say, do you girls rehearse these conversations or what? Actually, Bouncy, that is more of a European tradition. You see, the right to hold the floor in a conversation begins with the oldest, and as soon as she pauses, the next in line has the option to speak, and she always grabs it, or she never gets a chance to speak at all. Good heavens! That sounds like the voice of Randolph Redfruit! It is simply the more to settling in the massive granite walls. Oh, finally, the last arrival. Excuse me. <coughs> Isn't this fun? I just adore parties. Oh, yes. Lots of fun. Smashing. Really exciting. <laughs> Quite dark up there. 
red hands being a doctor washes his hands quite carefully, right, Fanna? Yes. And Fritz, being a lawyer, takes great care in powdering his wigs, right, Frida? Yes. And Otto, being a merchant, probably quite good care in the labels on the mortuary. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And Heinrich, of course, being a policeman, can do his duty wherever he happens to be. <laughs> <laughs> It's not his fault. 
What is that? It's back. Don't ask me. I just got here. I went. Oh, he's just hanging around down there. Good, good. Well, it's getting late. You're not wearing a watch. Even if I were, it would still be getting late. Maybe I should go out and come in again. No, no, stay where you are, Lord. They're just not used to the mountain air. I don't understand. Daisy, dear, have you forgotten the effect upon the brain that this rare atmosphere has after a few hours' exposure to it? I do feel the giddy now that you mention it. You didn't mention you were giddy. <laughs> I can't take much more of their jabbering. Now, now, calm yourself, Lord. The rarefied air, the atmosphere here, has an effect upon the brain similar to that of an overindulgence in alcohol. They find it difficult to grasp things. How long has Daisy lived here? Most of her life. That explains a lot. <laughs> I think I'm beginning to understand. The thinner air up here. Plus the strain of our long journey, not to mention all the wine and brandy. Do not worry, my friends, the lightheadedness will pass away. But I must warn you, beware the possibility of hallucinations. Yes, you may see or hear strange things, <laughs> but do not believe any of them. Then how can I believe that? You're the strangest thing I've ever seen or heard. <laughs> oh, my precious. You say the nicest things. Oh, no, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> well, it's just about bedtime. Would anyone like a nightcap? Oh, no, thank you, sir. I sleep in the raw. Frank! <laughs> what would I hope? A drink, darling. A bedtime <clears throat> drink. Oh, yes. That would hit the spot. You know. But. Aren't you a bit premature? Yes, after all, we still have guests in the castle. Oh, they can't leave. None of our guests can leave. Never? <laughs> oh, don't be silly, you two. Of course our guests can leave. I mean, they always have. Haven't they, Daddy? Uh, I believe so, but as far as I can remember, they always have. But not tonight. I fear, Master, the storm has washed out the bridge. We will have to remain here until tomorrow. And what then? The bridge can't be rebuilt overnight, can it? In daylight, there is a footpath one can use to cross the ravine. I would not try it during a thunderstorm. Well, if Ward wouldn't try it, I certainly won't. Daisy, you don't have to leave. You live here. <coughs> My sisters are growing concerned, husband. Has anybody seen those missing stockings? Uh, I'll ask around. Nonsense, Lord. Stay where you are. Where you are. Let us not give in to the hysterical ravings of a bunch of women. I'm not hysterical. <laughs> My sisters came here with their fiancés. They want to know what happened to them. So do I. Yes. What has become of my hands? Where has my fridge gone? I can't find my auto anywhere. Has, has anyone seen my honey? <laughs> Wait, I have to. There is a way. The secret can be found in the Pittsburgh Gypsy blood of the citizens. Take my hands, all of you. Now, dim the lights. Do not break the circle. Everyone must concentrate. Wait a minute. We're all here in the circle. We get the lights. Do not interrupt. If you speak, you will drive away the spirits. <laughs> okay, okay. I can take a hand. But what are we going to do? I cannot find my honey anywhere. <laughs> he was right here before we went upstairs. Where is he now? I think he took a stroll in the cellar. Oh, down there, in that awful place! Oh, come off it, Heidi. You've never even seen my cellar. How do you know that it's awful down there? <coughs> Curse that suddenly mortar. <laughs> Husband, the point is, 
my, my sisters are back here with their fiancés, and they want to go home with them. Wouldn't people talk? You know very well how I meant that. <laughs> Foggy speech and confused conversation to the depletion of oxygen to the brain. Like a cheap drunk. Yes, have you ladies forgotten so soon? Soon? They haven't been up here since big going away party. I have a going away party? No, we did as soon as you left. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But what of it? Even if we are a bit woozy, and our speech is a little bit thick.
Hurry, Lord, we must work quickly. While the lightning from the storm is powering the generators, you know what to do. Yes, Master! <laughs> but uh, what of your daughter Daisy? Uh, she will return for you on her way to bed. Yes, never fear about Daisy. She never notices anything. Well, she has been to college now. What if she actually got something out of it? Oh, you saw what she got out of it. That's a balloon and a bicycle salesman. Uh, I would, about him, Master. Salesmen are usually very shrewd. You know how clever a peddler can be. Nonsense. Anyone can peddle a bicycle. <laughs>
say how far it remains until dawn, master. Good, there is time. Please go and get Gretchen. <laughs> the boy, have her come here with the dinner gong. <laughs> I didn't expect to find you still up, sir. This is close to dawn. Yes, Gretchen, I have worked rather late, but my work is completed. There upon that chair lies the result of months of study and effort, the culmination of a year's long dream. And one heck of a night's work. <laughs> what is on that chair, sir? You shall find out soon enough. Please ring the dinner gong. At this hour? It will awaken the whole household. Gretchen, do as you're told. Yes. <laughs> I suppose you are all wondering why I've called you here today. You mean tonight, don't you? Still black as a pitch outside. <laughs> it was all I could do to find my clothes. Yeah, what's the big idea? Anyhow. And what's that thing in the middle of the room? It's not Daisy, is it? Of course not. Then where is she? Yes, her side of the bed hasn't been slept in. Wait, all of you! Let the Baron speak. Thank you, Lord. The creature which lies upon this chair under this sheltering sheet is something the likes of which the world has never before seen. This bottle contains a mild anesthetic. If I but remove the tubing from between its lips, the creature will rise! Baron, <laughs> I've been meaning to talk to you about my retirement. Silence! <laughs> Never mind this stupid creature. What has become of Daisy? You impetuous Americans! Can you not wait half a moment? No, sir, I cannot. I demand to know the whereabouts of your daughter. Oh, very well. She's down in the cellar. What? Daisy? All alone? Down there? In that dreadful place? Dreadful is a relative term. <laughs> <laughs> she may be enjoying herself immensely. I find that difficult to believe. So do I. Herr Baron, I intend to go down there once. Bring her back to the light of day. Or the twilight of early morning, anyhow. Neither you or your horrible henchmen can stop me. Uh, who's stopping you? Go already. Frank, no! Don't go! It might be a trap! Mr. Sterling, if you are going to the cellar, will you please get on with it? Sorry, Bathia. Back in a minute. <laughs> May I continue, please? It must have crossed your minds that since my marriage to my beloved Maritza, none of the rest of you have been getting any younger. You're referring to the Zitzen sisters, of course. <laughs> Why? Have you been getting any younger? At my tender age? Why would I want to? <laughs> Ain't it the truth? <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, I noted that you were all in a terrible quandary. Albeit all of you save Heidi were fast approaching beyond a marriageable age. Well, after all, it was my turn. Then ours. It was with great horror and shock that you noticed the attention that was given to Heidi by Heinrich, the village chief of police. <laughs> what luck then when Heinrich turned out to be one of quadruplet brothers? Each as handsome as the next, and each of whom was willing to wed each of you, thus you into the European system of sisterly succession. But when the brothers Stunken adamantly and oddly refused to wed you in a four-person ceremony, yet each was willing to wed you in a more usual two-person rite, it got me to wondering. Hey, Baron, could you speed it up? The hypostatic bottle is nearly empty. Yes, hurry, darling, please. Go on! Without delay! Just stand there! Say <laughs> something! Because when the anesthetic... Will you all shut up? That's <laughs> much better. Thank you. Now, the oddest part of the thing was the occupation of each of the brothers. You see, I noted that each of the brothers had a job that was near perfection with each of the jobs of the unengaged sisters. What do you mean, nearly? 
it suddenly flashed into my mind that the occupations of the brothers was precisely the same as one half of the old jumping rope rhyme. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief, doctor, lawyer, merchant, chief. Oh, of course. Good heavens, he's right. Hurry, Martha, hurry, Martha, a few drops remaining in the bottle. Oh. Yes, hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Scientist, I decided to try an experiment. What? what? You? What? Man? What? Kind of scientist? Oh, uh, you now Donald is a social scientist. Why, yes. He's even written a book on the subject. It's on the end table. I have made my life's work, the study of people, how they get along. Why they do not, in what manner they may improve themselves. <gasps> the anesthetic! It's all gone! Hurry! Finish! Get on with it because yeah. the creature is stirring! Not even a mouse! <laughs> <laughs> She's busy more than her Hermione! Why are you talking to you? Go on here, Mary. So. Anyhow, I knew I had all the elements on hand, all eight of them, for the creation of the perfect man. I simply had to take the elements and combine them. Hurry! Hurry! It's alive! Be quiet so I can. What do you mean by mad scientist? Oh, I was plenty mad. Downright hoppy mad. Don't you all wonder who I was mad at? Who? Who? Oh, it's alive! Calm yourselves, there is nothing to fear. Stand your ground and you shall see my experiment come to life before your very eyes. No! Don't! No! Don't! No! Don't! No! Don't! No. Don't. What? <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't know the rhythm. Now, brace yourselves as I present to you the perfect man. Oh! It has a stethoscope and Randolph Redfrew's gold watch. It's fits his wig and Peter Payton's ragged jacket. It's on a apron, a Bill Bond's team cup, and it's tiny. Oh, 
right, I'll tell you everything. I am an only child. The Baron is quite correct. Because I was smitten with love, that's why I did it. I was smitten with love the moment I laid eyes upon my Heidi. But what did I find? She had three older sisters. Three older sisters who must wed before she herself could. I was distraught, dismayed, downhearted, disgusted, disappointed. All kinds of things beginning with the letter B. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, what if they were to get married? I had done some acting in school. I was master of disguise. The whole thing became very clear to me. I just made up the part about being quadruplets. Then, one by one, I had my so-called brothers move to the village, take up jobs there, meet the remaining zits and sisters, well, the rest you know. Not quite. How did you propose to hold down so many jobs, support so many wives, so many households? Oh, as for this support, that part was easy. Each sense and sister came with dowry of 7,000 meesters. Oh, yes, I had nearly forgotten. Uh, as for the jobs and the households, well, I, I, I never intended, except for the household and job I would have with my honey. I never intended for any of the others to last more than moments beyond the other weddings. You plan to run off? Desert me? Make us think we were widows? That is it. That was precisely his plan. <sighs> I, I, I know it was cruel of me, base, heartless. And besides that, I found out for a while that I quite liked each one of you. <laughs> And since I was caught in my own trap, and later in the trap of the bear. Donald's trap? I don't understand. What was your trap, darling? Well, I was certain that Heinrich knew the old jumping rope rhyme, so I immediately contacted the four men I needed. A rich man, a poor man, a beggar man, and a thief, and brought them into my confidence. They all agreed to help, and one by one, they pretended to disappear. I, I was terrified. I could see doom approaching. I knew it was only a matter of time. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Hans was next. And of course, it was a fair and easy matter for Hans to simply vanish. And, and Fritz and Otto, too, for that matter, to vanish. Poof! As if they had never existed. Which, of course, they hadn't. But thanks to my scheming with the other four missing men, it was far too soon. Too soon. <laughs> you mean that he planned? Right after each wedding? How do you expect me to finish? I don't know what he planned. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? He planned to marry, marry Hannah, then vanish, Frida, then vanish, Olga, then vanish, then... Wait a minute. How did these Spanish girls get me out? Do not be upset with my Heidi. Do not be upset with me. I did all of this for you. I, I, I thought it would be so simple. Such a foolish belief it was. And as silly as believing in Santa Claus. What does it even mean? Search me. But Heidi, it's connection. Please go on. Well, actually, it is really quite simple. When the four men came here to the castle, Ren, Fru, Peyton, Box, and Throssel, I made them comfortable in the cellar. I knew it would now be a simple matter to get Heinrich up here, along with his four, or his other three, imaginary brothers. Uh, and it was, too. Uh, as dreadful as this castle is, I dared not stay in the village, not with this mysterious banishment creeping up on me. So when the invitation came to come to the party, well, I jumped at the chance. Most people jump when they're here. <laughs> of course, when Han went up to the bathroom, I was right across the corridor in the powder room. In the darkness, it was easy to steal his stethoscope. 
I then the Fritz is weak, and then off was apron. And, and by the time I arrived at Heinrich, well, I had wised up, and I didn't go upstairs to the bathroom at all. But how in the world did you keep up the deception on the way here? Yes, riding in the carriage with all four fiancés? Well, when anyone goes out at night in Transylvania, it's... It feels safer if you keep your eyes closed. Good. Well, I'm glad the mystery's all solved. Now, who wants to play some poker? Uh, where are the men you were playing poker with? Oh, I cleaned them all out. They're all on their way home by now. Daisy, we can't stop for games right now. We have to do something about your aunts. Why? What's wrong with them? Darling, Donna, they have all had their hearts broken tonight. I, I know, and it's all my stupid, selfish fault. If only this ridiculous sisterly succession custom were not the law in our village. Just a moment. I am the law in the village. Then why don't you change the custom? What? Change the custom? It can't be done. Could it? Austin, could you? Well, I've never given the matter much thought. But, come to think of it... But, Daddy, even if you do change the law, which one will Heinrich marry? What? Do you seriously believe my sister would marry him now? A liar? A philanderer? A trifler? Two, 
Next Friday, so. 